A debilitating disease is a trial not just for those who contract it, but for everyone else in the family as well. From John Blackstone now, an unblinking look at a particularly cruel disease and the full gamut of human reactions that its onslaught can provoke. If you have heard of Huntington's disease at all, it may be because of Carol Carr, the 63-year-old mother who killed her two bedridden sons in a Georgia nursing home. She shot them, she says, to stop their suffering with the disease. As Carr awaits trial for murder, her tragedy has given new urgency to the mission of Chris Furby. Um, when I heard about the case, I, I kept saying to myself, you know, I, I want to do something. He is caretaker of a municipal park in Marin County, California. But his real work these days is to make others understand Huntington's, an incurable inherited disease that haunts the families of some 250,000 Americans. Huntington's is the disease that cut short the life of folk singer and songwriter Woody Guthrie, who died in 1967. Chris is convinced that Carol Carr was led to her desperate act because the world around her doesn't comprehend the unique torment of Huntington's. She would go in day after day and see her sons, you know, deteriorating to the point where, you know, they can't do anything. To help others understand, Chris is now reliving his mother's deterioration with Huntington's. A vibrant woman whose passion was painting. Chris is creating a documentary from hundreds of hours of videotape. I allowed myself to film my mom in that vulnerable state that she was in. As the defective Huntington's gene disrupted her brain, Chris's mother, Rosemary, was seized by the uncontrollable movements that mark the disease. Today's Mother's Day, and it hasn't started out to be a happy one. Chris shot the video in 1995 largely as a personal diary. I remember when I first saw my mom in five years. I couldn't believe it, because my memories of my mom are she's so beautiful, and that's what I want to keep in my head. The movements are sometimes called Huntington's Dance, and that's what Chris calls his documentary. It begins with his return home to West Virginia. I ran away from her and the, trying to run away from, the, from Huntington's disease too, but you can't run away from it because it's, it stares me in the face every day. Children have a 50-50 chance of inheriting the disease from their parent. I can't help but think, is that my fate? Is that what lies ahead for me? Once, there was no way of knowing who had inherited the defective gene until symptoms started. But now, a genetic test can reveal the future. One of these days, I'm going to have those movements which is how Chris found out that he, too, has the Huntington's gene. Uh -huh. Symptoms usually begin about age 40. You are now? I'm 36 now. I get a little older. I'm not really too thrilled about having birthdays. <laughs> now, Chris is in a race against his genetic destiny. But he's not alone. In a support group with others who have Huntington's in their family, Making the challenges of facing the future I are question. shared. For some in the group, Paul, Susie, and Fred, the first disturbing symptoms have already begun. Martina has just tested positive for Huntington's. Susan doesn't have the disease, but her husband did, and both her daughter and son now have Huntington's. This is my family, uh, 1194. Seven, seven years ago. Seven years ago. This is the same group um, last Christmas. Huntington's cuts a swath so through any see. family with the disease. Now, since the, so just as what seven years have, have done. Mm -hmm. Martina says taking the genetic test for Huntington's well, is a watershed decision for anyone at risk. You can't be tested and become paralyzed. You have to use it in a way where you're going to appreciate things more. Robert, though, sees nothing to gain by being tested and perhaps plenty to lose. If I get tested, my, uh, the 
anything I do medical goes right back to my job. Barbara sees the future presenting difficult choices of life and death. My friends with Huntington's and, and myself are frequently wondering what we're going to do. I watched my mother deteriorate and you know, I, I think dying consciously, making a conscious choice to choose when you're going to die so you don't end up in a mental institution like she did, um, is appropriate for somebody going through something like this. But uh, So it's a tough call. Chris Furby says his mother sometimes talked of suicide. As the disease progressed, the lines in her paintings began to blur. Still, she struggled to continue her art, to remain independent. She died confined to a nursing home two years ago. Most in the support group have watched their own parents go through it and know all too well and what could lie ahead for them. In Susie's family, the toll keeps rising. My brother died a year and a half ago, and my other brother's dying. And I'm, you know, I'm starting to feel all my, you know, my symptoms come up and stuff. I'm dropping things, coffee, and I'm, I'm banging into stuff. And just but even in Susie's family, hope survives. Beside her at the support group is her niece, Jocelyn. She's pregnant. Yeah, three and a half months. Um, actually, it was, you know, it was a hard decision because obviously I have um, Huntington. Um, my whole family pretty much has it. So really Jocelyn has decided not to test her baby for Huntington's. Um, she is confident in her child's lifetime, research will find answers. Um, I figure, you know, baby has 40 years, that's a really long time. Bet on science and time. So there's got to be something positive in it. I get scared from time to time. I'm not 100% okay with this disease, but I'm pretty, I feel that I'm fairly... Um, I'm fairly okay with the fact that I will get sick one of these days and that I'm not going to let this thing, you know, drag me down. In his videotapes, Chris finds new strength as he works to tell the story of Huntington's. I want people, not only the general public, but healthcare workers, you know, doctors, nurses, uh, nursing homes, I want them all to know what Huntington's disease is and to realize that the person that they're dealing with is actually a human being. His goal is to show that in each tortured body, a real person remains.